Northerners, starting to my right. Hey, Mark Herman, aka LA Bengal fan on Twitter, repping the fucking Bengals. <laughs> Dave Green, kind of a sad Browns fan. Oh, uh, Dan Davis Utar, kind of a sad, but maybe not really because we're still in first place Ravens fan. Chris Adkins, happiest person on the couch, Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> All right. He was the Penguins fan last year. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> shut up, <laughs> shut up. Mark, what do you got? Well, this game could not have gone any worse for the Bengals. Uh, AJ tore his hamstring, third play of the game. Gio tore his ACL towards the end of the game. Nugent missed two PATs, so we didn't win the game. And it uh, actually cost us the game. And the defense actually played well, uh, but our O-line was fucking useless. Look at this clip right here of Clint Bowling getting schooled Ooh. by Kyle Williams. Yeah. Absolutely schooled. I mean, that's not Jeremy Hill's fault. Williams is in the backfield five yards right off the snap. And that was just indicative of how the offensive line played. Um, another play that just absolutely sums up our season is this play right here by none other than Adam Jones. What should be an interception in the second quarter of a 7-7 game bounces through his hands and right into the receiver's hands for a first down. That is just typical of how our whole season has gone. And the second half was even worse. I mean, we only had two first downs but up, until, before, up until the last okay. drive. We only had two first downs. Our defense, once again, played well, held them to six points. We got the ball at the Buffalo 44 with a first and 10 and had a three and out and punted. Mm, I mean, Jesus. that just right. sums yeah. everything up. All you need is five yards, maybe a first down, and we can maybe try a field goal by Nugent. Not saying he would have made it, but we could have tried it. Okay? We can try. No, we can no, try. But, but, but three and out. That was just indicative of the second half. Um, on a plus note, if you haven't left already and gone and slit your wrist, um, <laughs> here is Tyler Boyd's. First career touchdown. Hopefully, there are many to come. He's going to get tons of playing time with AJ out now. But uh, but that's it. It was a nice catch. And the thing I found odd was that he didn't even keep the ball. He handed it to the official. So once Very again, cool. Barry Sanders esque. I've been here before. I'll yep. be here. I'll be back. Mm -hmm. So uh, very good. But other than that. That's all I could say. I could go on the whole show about the problems in Cincinnati. Real quick, who's your number one? Who's our number one? It's going to be, well, they're going to play Brandon LaFell, but he can't He's push the one. top off a of defense. Once AJ was out, Gilmore and the other corners just kept the guys in front of them. They knew there was nobody who could get behind them, and, and it just wasn't going to work. I mean, it was, it, was, it was just sad. The whole game was sad to watch. Jeez. So. Well, no more sadder than the, the Browns and Steelers. Um, I guess we don't got to talk about the win or the, the loss. Or the score. <laughs> uh, I don't know if uh, Chris, you want a jersey. But... <laughs> you know, I was not gonna let a, you get too far. It's just a I Tim Couch. Uh, no, no, no. It's Tim, Timmy just, Couch is actually one of my favorite Browns in the past. It's, it's ten years. Look, ten. I mean, years. I got Ozzy Newsom. He's the he's the only quarterback to start all sixteen games yeah. for the Browns. Yeah, Timmy Couch back. was decent. There you go. Well Kentucky done. Guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, Kentucky guy. Yeah, go big blue. Yeah. All right, just to make us feel like we're winners still, Browns fans. There you go. There you go. Remember that one. All right, so uh, North remembers. real, real freaking <laughs> quick, okay, Chris? Eight sacks, 14 quarterback hits. That's what our offensive line gave up. Uh, Barnage had two catches on five targets for a touchdown. I'm not showing a clip of that shit because there really isn't much to talk about in this game. Uh, we rushed the ball same as last week, 13 mm -hmm. times, mm -hmm. 33 mm -hmm. yards. We're starting a freaking trend right here. And I, I said last week that's not a good thing. We, If you guys really want to know what I said, watch last week's video. Um, I like to talk about uh, Lawrence Timmons knocking Kessler out with a late hit, which was garbage and bullshit. And I really, really hope the NFL contacts him about some money he owes. Uh, yeah, I really think we need an offensive coordinator, and this game was just miserable. Go ahead, you can brag about it. If someone took Ben's head off, I'd say the same thing. So, yeah, I can't be mad. Okay, so what happened here? What happened, and Steelers fans, don't get too excited. What happened here is that the, the defense showed up. I mean, like Dave said, this turned into a sack party to the eighth level. Eight sacks in this eight. game. Eight. Fourteen quarterback hits is ridiculous. Whew. And this was the first game where we had all three of our first, uh, first three draft picks playing the game together. And the guys did really well together. Especially Burns. Burns had to pick uh, early in the first quarter. And then Javon, Javon Hargrave 
has his first touchdown as a D lineman. That was awesome to see. But like I said, don't get too ahead of yourselves here. We only scored 24 points, which is the lowest score against we the Browns. We held the team to under 25, Browns fans. Yes. We're progress. Yeah, that is progress. 225 for the first time this season. We only put up one offensive touchdown. One offensive touchdown. It was not a great day for us. Mm. One thing I will say, I hope every Steeler fan in unison got up and waved your towel for my man Harrison, who is now our all-time sack leader with 70, uh, 77 and a half sacks. Awesome to see that. Um, as far as the offense goes, if I told you that Ben was going to throw for less than 170 and no touchdowns, would you think that we won the game? Probably not. But here comes Bell. He has a rushing touchdown. He has 200 yards from scrimmage. And oh, that is perfect. really what did it for us. That, the win, both quarterbacks, none of the quarterbacks we ran out there, nor uh, Roethlisberger could throw in that win. Uh, the weather no, conditions no, it, it was horrible. Yeah, that was it does go back cold, to snowy game. Freaking, yeah. See, but that, that, here's the, that's the AFC North run, run, that I love the most. But here's, here's what it comes down to, and here's why I'm so confused. Earlier in the season, we were talking about how solid of a run team you guys were. The, and, and here in this game, McCown comes in for the very end of the third quarter, fourth quarter, and he's your leading rusher. McCown was your leading rusher. That's pretty the, sad. The injury to Betonio early in the year, that hurt us. Starting Cam Irving, that dude's just fucking playing garbage, honestly, and he has no business being in the NFL. Um, <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Greco should be playing center. Pastor, uh, uh, um, Bailey's garbage. The whole offensive line's garbage, and we're being exposed. So if we can't run the ball, that allows your defense to sit back, play the pass, which we're not able to do, and tee off on the blitz. And, and that's what happened. Have you, have you we, guys, we pinned our ears back and came in. Yeah. I'm going to touch on this later, but uh, have you guys had the same offensive line starting every single game? No. Like, no. We yeah. rotated we, offensive us line either. guys. Like, no continuity. No Ravens continuity. either, and that's my biggest thing, and I'll, I'll get on that. So I'll, I'll throw this out there really quick. This is just... An unbelievable stat, and I, I just Ben Roethlisberger this time next season can be the winningest quarterback in First Energy Stadium. I mean, just think about that for a second. He only plays there once a season, and he may be the winningest quarterback since 1999 in that stadium. I think that says everything and a lot about the Browns. Yeah, well, anyway, it does because it says that they don't win more than a game or two a year, and it says that they don't start the same quarterback every year. Yeah. Right. So that's how a visiting quarterback only coming once a year with 10 wins can be the leading, leading, guy. leading guy in the stadium. Uh, All right, well, tell so. us about this sorry-ass uh, Ravens <laughs> loss. All right, so, yeah, Ravens uh, lost to the Cowboys 27-17. Uh, start with offense. Uh, C. Smith is now the 14th in the NFL for over 1,000 catches. That's amazing. Uh, so let's start with a little tribute. Watch this play right here. I mean, he comes up, grabs it, drags both feet across. I mean, that's the kind of catch only a veteran, professional, trained athlete can make. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, our run game did a little better. Dixon and West made some nice plays, but we still only rushed the ball 16 times. And one of those 16, by the way, was from Flacco. So technically only 15. Uh, Mike Wallace had one, so maybe less than that. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, real quick, Jeremy Zuta. Okay, look, dude, I really want to use you as a scapegoat, but two of those calls on Zuta in that game were absolute BS. Uh, that personal foul, Riddick, uh, it actually happened, in my opinion, like right as the whistle happened. Uh, Stanley, he's a rookie with his things, but all his penalties came either before he was injured or right after he came back. So, I mean, I expect him to make mistakes. On defense, honestly, we were kind of absolutely outcoached on defense in the second half. Dean Pease was so dedicated to stopping the run that it later became a hindrance in the second half. Um, and then once Prescott started throwing the second half, he just picked us apart. Um, honestly, P should have made adjustments. Uh, they read every single defensive plan we had, and they just beat it. And you never, ever give the offense a 10-yard cushion. I mean, we only had one sack in the game, and that was from Albert McClellan. So, meh. Uh, one caveat, something that, um, looking at the stats today, I kind of realized. Dallas had eight receivers, including two running backs in the game, right? We had six receivers, which included one running back in the game. They genuinely had more weapons to throw to and spread the ball out way more than we could. All right, so without Jimmy Smith, our secondary is, I mean, we all know this is our weakest point. Des and Winton just waltzed up that field in the second half. And I know that we don't quote unquote draft for need, but we need better corners, Ozzy. Um, 
Honestly, we were just beat by a better team. Um, the only other thing I gotta say is fuck you Cowboys for that eye poke to Joe Flacco. Fuck you, that's bullshit. Real quick stats, um, 368 yards to their 417. Uh, we had 24-21 uh, to their 35-39 in possession. Last week, fun fact, Browns had 21-24. This week, we had 24-21. Weird. Um, we had 17 first downs to their 27. Third down efficiency was horrible at 33%, and we only had 101 total rushing yards. And how does this then bail you out of your game next, this coming week? Because we are not playing Let's Dallas. Let's go right into that. Yeah, like we are not playing Dallas. So do you want to start out with that? Uh, well, let, let me touch on something really quick. Something you mentioned was poor uh, defensive back play. Mm -hmm. I think that's very common on this couch, and I think that's one of the reasons it really is. all fours are getting our asses whipped. I, yeah. I just saw that Artie Burns with two picks is our only defensive back with a pick this season. What, like, what are these guys doing back there? I, I mean, we, ha we have that. some, but... Well, one of the things that was brought up on PFT this morning was the fact that the reason why the North is doing poorly is because we're playing the NFC East. Yeah. And they turned out to be the strongest they, division. They really did, the so NFC East. We all have, so that's, we're that's, playing, so we're playing the AFC East and the NFC East, we all got the Patriots, and then we all got the Cowboys, the Redskins, the, so, I mean, that may be one of the reasons why. And they, no. and I mean, the Cowboys are just yeah. beastly. I mean, yeah. they look, and they make everybody look bad. They've won they're, what, they're the nine in a row? Football, right? Yeah, they're best they are the football. best team in football. Okay. Right? Absolutely. All right, so you so, want to start off with yeah. the Ravens Bengals? Well, yeah, sure. We play the Ravens this week. I don't hold out a whole lot of hope. Um, AJ tore his hamstring. Uh, they did an MRI. They say he's out this week, but he could return in three to four weeks. Guys, why are we going to bring him back in three to four weeks? Why would we bring him back at all? The season will be over. I mean, we literally would. We need to run the table and win our last six just to maybe make the playoffs. That would give us a nine, yeah, I just six, and one record. That doesn't necessarily get us into the, the yeah. division title. So, so there's absolutely no way. Our, the postseason's over. The Bengals should be now in evaluate mode. Um, we also lost Gio Bernard. He was put on IR today. So our two best offensive weapons are gone. And if the team was playing well, you'd say, oh, we have a chance to come back. The O-line is freaking horrible. I mean, they cannot protect Andy Dalton. They cannot create holes. Mm. And it's only missing one player from last year. They were one of the top offensive lines. So that's why I blame the coaching staff. That's why I think we need to make changes. Guess what? Today it was announced that we're keeping Nugent. We're not cutting him. If you can't cut the fucking kicker that cost Jeez. us two wins, we're not going to fire anybody. No, not till So I that's it. So the season. coaches are all staying. The players are all staying. I mean, what kind of a signal does that send to the line? Locker room. So I don't hold out a whole lot of hope for this week's game. I don't think I don't know that there's another win on our calendar. We may give the Browns their only win. I mean, you look down the schedule. We're at Houston. We're at uh, Baltimore. I mean, we play yeah. you guys twice. Pittsburgh. I don't see another win on the schedule. I, I really don't. If the way they're playing, so. So, I don't know. I mean, I didn't even come up with a score. 21-6? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's 21-6. I mean, but but I almost, part six. of me almost wants to just lose out because we need to, to get some good draft picks. And it's a big difference between drafting 12th or 13th and drafting 4th or 5th. Because yeah. that 4th pick in the 2nd round, the 4th pick in the 3rd round, those yeah, are those money rounds. The last time we were sitting here, we got A.J. Green in the first round. We got Andy Dalton in the second round. I mean, we had a great draft. That's what we're going to need to do. So I don't see any advantage if we're not going to win the division. I don't see any advantage at winning any more games. So right. I'll say this. I mean, I love Lewis. He's from maybe 10 minutes away from where I'm from in Washington. But for him to be there this long and have never won a playoff game, you guys are, are a turnover adverse team. I, I don't I, I don't hold I don't hold the changes. playoff thing as as big an issue. Um, a lot of it has just been timing. We've peaked earlier in the year. My big thing is the way the team looks now. I mean, they're underachieving. And I got to tell you, this will be one of the most coveted coaching jobs if we fire Marvin Lewis. You've got a quarterback already in place. You've got A.J. Green already in place. You've got yeah. Tyler Eifert. The core is there. You've got a deep roster. You've got a defense that can play. I mean, this would be, and you've got I, nowhere to go, but I this wonder would if be a Jackson huge, is now kicking himself. This would be, no. <laughs> this would be a coveted <laughs> coaching job job right. so like I said it's uh but that's if it becomes a coaching yes. job yeah. we don't know 
So, so all right, so uh, start all the Vegas. I mean, Revens. Um, yeah. So uh, we're, we're fresh off the last from Dallas. Uh, we face a, as he said, beat up AJ Green and Gio Bernardless Cincinnati. Uh, so how does this play out? Um, I mean, the first week after a big injury is always like the worst. Mm. Um, Bengals had two though, uh, and weren't really performing above average before that to begin with. So it's hard to see the Bengals O-line denying Timmy Jernigan, who's got five sacks, and Terrell Suggs, who's got four. But we still have a top five defense, and they and we still have players that can destroy our secondary on the Bengals. They still got players that can do stuff. So let's touch on that. Uh, Bengals are three and six uh, and one <laughs> this season, uh, but they are one and four on games away this year. Uh, they're coming to our house, Ooh. and we yep. gotta get after their pass. We gotta bring that pass rush. Which brings me also to a, a theory that Marvin Lewis has simply exploited our secondary since Ed Reed left. Jimmy Smith wasn't healthy most of last year, um, so he wasn't concerned. I and mean, we don't even have many DBs from last year at all. We're, we're smaller, we're not as robust as like a gazelle like AJ Green, but he's out. And we have a much better shot with him out, obviously. I mean, we can double-team Eifert, make Boyd frustrated. If we can do that, we're going to dominate. Uh, now, I want to send a great big thank you to uh, Super Saiyan Sandwich on uh, the Raven subreddit for this here, our bottom line. According to all the research he did, and he did an amazing job, we're third in offensive line penalties. Third in the, in the league. We've got 26 for 234 yards. The vast majority is for holding. And this goes back to what I said earlier, that Zutah is leading that with five drives killed due to penalty. Now, I get it, some of those are bullshit, but we may actually lead the league right now in drive killing penalties. Like, there's no data yet for me to collect that, but like, we were talking about it. Uh, so just let that sink in. We may lead the league in drive killing penalties. Um, we have no consistency on our O line. We haven't started the same players as I was saying. You haven't either all year, uh, and we just can't switch, keep switching up. We're still abandoning the run when we're down. We still can't seem to keep from fucking throwing the line, below the line of scrimmage, behind the line of scrimmage, for some stupid reason. And I mean, honestly, seriously, tear that play out of the playbook. Get rid of it. I never want to see it again. Um, honestly, if our if our Ravens really, if the Ravens bring it, they bring the defense, and we we do better on offensive line. We actually gel. This could be, I mean, honestly, a blowout, but I don't think it will be. I think we're going to have our problems. I'm predicting Ravens 2013. 2013. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, that gives you Nugent twice to make a field goal. <laughs> I, I, my six was a touchdown and Nugent misses the extra point. That was my <laughs> six. But, oh, you know. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. All right, so uh, the Giants come to Cleveland on Sunday. It's a 1 o'clock start. The Giants have won five fucking straight. They sit at seven and three. They're, they're looking dangerous right now. Uh, they're getting dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, they are. Uh, they give up 20 points a game, and they average 20.4 points a game. The Browns, on the other hand, we get 16.7 points a game, and we give up 29.5. Uh, the guys you got to watch out for with New York, it's going to be on defense, Jason Pierre-Paul and Landon Collins. On offense, you got to watch both the wide receivers, OBJ and Shepard. I, I honestly I don't see a lot of chance here for the Browns, especially with the way we're playing. We're gonna run out to uh, the Statue of Liberty, McCown, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, this is looking like it's gonna be a 30 to 13 beatdown of the Brownies at home. You know it's perfect that the Statue of Liberty says, "Giving you're tired, you're weak, you're poor." You know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you that, should all that may have been the dirtiest dig I've ever had. I'm sorry. I'm that was sorry. so fucking cheesy. That was so bad. <laughs> Let I'm me sorry. wait. Since it's getting it. uncomfortable on this couch. Yeah. Since, yeah. Point since, the, it's it's getting really since the Ravens guy wants to take a shot like that at the Browns, let me remind all you Baltimore fan, fans that you guys only average 19 and a half points a game. Which Thank you. allows us, uh, there's like a five team difference between what we average a game and what you guys average. No, you're, a game. you're completely so, right. We also like don't put on job games. affairs. But, um. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. And I mean, that's serious. They were offered a fucking damn ticket. This lame ass chick who wrote this stupid ass article for The Onion or The Orion. No, it was, fucking just, it was for Dead Spin. Great yeah. magazine. Refused to talk about anything positive that the Browns did. We've donated food to the food bank. We've given shoes and clothes to the kids in the inner city. We're rebuilding five fucking football fields along with giving brand new equipment. You name me something that the Baltimore Ravens are doing uh, I can, outside I can of sucking fucking Pittsburgh, why don't you tell us what's going on in your 
Yeah. All right, so Bengals fans. Well, fan base more <laughs> pathetic than us. There you go. Yeah. Oh, right here. And I stuck oh. up for the Bengals. All right, so I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a page out of Mark's book here. I don't know what I'm gonna get this week. I don't know if I'm gonna get Shit. fruit cocktail or if I'm gonna get beans or what Mixed is vegetables. Who knows? I don't know what's gonna come. Oh, we all know the score. Please. It looks like uh, it looks like Luck may have to sit this one out. He's in proto. He's in concussion protocol, and unfortunately, this is a Thanksgiving Thursday game. Mm. He may not make it in time, which means I don't even know the guy's name. Uh, uh, Scott Tolzien may throw his first pass since the 2013 season. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. If Tolzien plays. I expect to beat the hell out of them. Okay. And like I said, I mean, we know the Colts. The Steelers have outscored the Colts 96 to 44 in the past couple of seasons. We have beat the shit. hell out of them, including like a 50 something point game two Dude, seasons fuck ago. The Colts. Fuck the Colts. I don't fuck know what's going Colts. on with them. They fuck have the been Colts. plain old ass the past couple of seasons. <laughs> but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Like I said, we only had one offensive touchdown against the Brownies. We dropped five easy. Easy interceptions, and Artie Burns is really the only guy back there getting interceptions. I mean, this game was not indicative of what's going on. Luckily for us, this was the first game since Cameron Hayward was out. He, our D line wasn't really exposed, but that may not be the, the case here. I mean, Frank Gore, he's gonna he's gonna come out there and gash us a couple of times. I'm not expecting this to be as easy of a game. I do think the Steelers are gonna take this one probably high end, 31-17. Uh, but I don't want to overlook the Colts here. And another huge problem we have, we do not have a number two receiver, or even really a number three receiver. What, you mean Eli Rogers isn't good enough? Eli Rogers is doing his thing, <laughs> but it's been very inconsistent this year. Very inconsistent this year. So I think ultimately, Coates probably will settle in that number two. Uh, Kobe Hamilton's kind of making a come up. He's, uh, he's 6'2". I see him uh, making a little bit more of an impact this this game with the injuries we have at the wide receiver. Like I said, All I right. think we're going to take this one. All right. Excellent. All right. Mailbag? Right? Yeah. 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 All yeah. right. Interesting note. Pagano wouldn't say that Tolzien or whatever his name is was going to be the quarterback. So they may bring in a practice squad guy. You don't know who you're preparing yeah. for. Yeah. So if it's not luck, you it could be anybody. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right. not too excited. We just faced the Browns, what, speed fifth and sixth quarterbacks? We need to yeah. do a speed round. Right. Let's do a speed round. All right, guys, speed so round. this is our mailbag Reddit speed round. We have uh, two minutes to <laughs> answer all the questions, 10 seconds per. So let me get down to the two-minute warning. And we have not seen these questions. Yeah. Well, okay. we haven't, none of you have seen these You'll questions. You'll tell by the answers. Yeah. We haven't seen the, right. haven't seen the so questions. So we also have a new – usually we break this down real quick between, like, Bengals, Browns, Ravens, Steelers. But we also have AF. See North general questions this time, thanks to the NFL thread and subreddit. All right, so we're going to start off here. We're going to go down the line with our first question for the AFC North. What's the best anagram for letters of the AFC North division? Like, if you can take AFC North division, we have to basically spread them out to make it something else. We're going to have to post that in our show notes. So we'll skip that um, because that that was like literally I'd never seen that. Okay, so uh, say fried chicken. So, yeah, let's let's start that over know. again because that's that's some bullshit. Awesome but project. funny, funny. Yeah, um, like all right, so uh, kill, fuck, or marry other three uh, three div uh, teams in the division. Go. Who would you kill? Who would you fuck? Who would you marry? Uh, I would kill the Steelers. I would. Uh, God, who would I fuck? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Miami Dolphins. No, no, it's got to be in the AFC North. Oh, division. oh, oh, okay. Then I would kill the Steelers. Uh, marry the Browns and fuck the Ravens. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> All right, you. I asked the question. No, 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 no. This is a good one. I've never I like seen this. the question. This is good. Go for it. I am a Browns fan, so fuck all three teams. <laughs> <laughs> go Brownies. Baby. We uh, may not have a good record, but go Brownies. All right. uh, real quick, Ravens, uh, f uh, kill the Steelers, uh, fuck the Bengals, marry the Browns. There you go. See, yeah. it's Browns. You've already yeah. got two wedding You've got exactly. Go, go, hurry, hurry. Number okay. three, I'm killing this guy. <laughs> I'm going to cuddle with this guy because he's a little soft. Mm. And oh. fuck the Bengals. These guys like it rough, oh, so shit. they're the only ones left. There you go. All right, all right. So moving on to uh, it's like <laughs> offense for let's go to do do. Everybody wants to marry you. Ah, I can't find. You're not Jan. 
Dude, Dude, Ravens guy. Let's go. All right, right. so uh, I know, right? Um, let the does this division winner this. realistically just come down to the second and first place, uh, like standings, basically? Does it come down to Steelers and Ravens? Two, is it a two? Does it literally come race? down to Steelers and Ravens? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Absolutely. these guys well, just now, yeah. Yeah. Listen, did, you've seen the Bengals play the last couple weeks. There's it's, nothing to make you think they can win the division. Who uh, do? Uh, it's like who the uh, do the Eagles take precedence over the Browns in the draft in this year? The Eagles. Does the Eagles affect the Browns draft this year? No. no. Not outside of that second pick in the first round. Yeah. Um, I would say, let's see, we got 10 seconds. Uh, okay. Uh, bu- 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 uh, thoughts of officiating thus far? It's bullshit. We can't even fucking Our figure head. out who's in bounds. It's been some shit. It's just like every other year. I mean, we're just getting no, closer to the game. It's been, it's I think we're just getting closer to the game. Yeah. Yeah. All right. They've cost games this year and changed out. Yeah. All right. We had a ton right. of questions. I'm sorry, guys. We couldn't get all to them. Uh, the, the only other Bengals question that was amazing was one person posted, Why? Why? Oh, I'm telling you. It's just sad. <laughs> all right. So, it is. Uh, all right. We got any new shout outs? Any subscribers? Yeah. Uh, we want to say like thank you to our newest off. subscribers, uh, Sip Nasty. Thank you. Um, Iman Nalbandian, thank you. Hopefully I'm saying that, and Sean Thomas, thank you guys thank so you. much whoa, for subscribing. Whoa. Sean Thomas might be my homeboy from high school. I gotta check that out. He might be my homeboy from. High- hey, Sean, that was you. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Uh, right. I think we're good here, guys. Yeah, Make sure yeah. that you send us your questions to afcnortherners at gmail.com, uh, or you can also yeah, post it on uh, Reddit if you're on there as well. Hit us up on Twitter with the hashtag mailbag, uh, and also Facebook, same thing. We love getting your questions. We make sure that we put them on every single time. Yeah. Um, and uh, Let's I think sign it off. Yeah. As we always do with yeah. Fuck, Fuck the, the Patriots. Patriots. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Drives come, life gets hard Hey fellow Northerners, we love the show. We want to make it even better. You may have noticed we started showing game clips and we have even more planned for you guys. So we need your help. We started a Patreon page to bring you our show commercial free for less than $5 a month. For less than the price of a Great Barbarian Knit Octopus Beanie on Amazon, which is actually a thing you should look that up, you can help make this show even better, including instant reactions to each game, a weekly podcast, in-depth analysis, and much more. If you want to help us improve and you can spare a little change, go to patreon.com forward slash AFC Northerners or click in the link below in the show notes to subscribe. Exactly. We appreciate every one of your views, your comments, and your emails. Thanks for watching, and as always, Fuck the Patriots! Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Thank you guys. Look at me! I'm Dr. Zoidberg!